Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Kuden Cassis for IFL TV. Bit of a strange day here at the Matchroom HQ. Um, delighted to be joined by John Ryder. Uh, John, I'll just explain, you can explain why this interview is happening, because uh, it must be a bit of a weird day for you, I said, off camera. Yeah, it's a yeah, strange day, but a day where I announced my retirement from active fighting and boxing and probably the transition now to, to train up. Um, a 14 year, nearly a 14 year career. Um, I think you you made your debut back in 2010. Um, do you remember your debut? I do, yeah. I think it was September, September 11th or something. Um, Ben Degani at your call. So, um, very fun memory since that. Yeah. You've had um, an exceptional career. Um, I think everyone that has kind of followed your career from around about when you turned pro till now would have kind of seen you fight pretty much everyone been in some very exciting high profile fights as well. Um I mean we talk about your career, but as a whole were you are you satisfied with what you accomplished in your career? Um yes and no. I think I've always had dreams and aspirations of being world champion and but uh, absolutely loaded. <laughs> it doesn't always work out that way, but listen I've had a very good run at it, very good crack at it, and um, I thought some of the biggest and best things out there, so I'm content with what I've done. Um, I've won a couple of interims along the way, and um, yeah, I mean, I'm happy, and uh, the time feels right. Obviously, off the back of your your defeat recently to Jaime Mungaya, um how quickly was that decision reached for you to, to hang the gloves up? In my mind, probably pretty, pretty instant. Um, obviously, it'd have been nice to to have won and then said that, that that'll that'll do. I think I knew deep down that my title was up. Um, it'd have been nice to off off on 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 the back of a win, but I think then the the temptation or the lure of another big fight would have probably been there. But I think um, I think now like, it forced my hand to make a decision and go enough's enough now. That's it for sure. In 14 years, obviously, I've covered uh, a lot of your fights. IFL have covered um, a lot of your fights in that 14 year period. We started in October of 2010 as well. Um, it seemed to be you, you had different phases of your career, and it seems to be the last third of your career where you started kind of getting those big fights, those, um, say, those kind of even financially incented but even the names of who you were fighting uh, came uh, towards the back end of your career. Um, but you, you just kept plugging away and kept kind of, when you were required to go in and, um, you know, fight eliminators, et cetera, and put yourself into position for some of these fights, you did what was asked for you. And in the end, you were rewarded with those fights. They didn't go your way, some of them, but you were rewarded in the end with those big fights. Is that? Yeah, yeah no, I never complained, just got on with it. Um, took every fight as it come and um, won some and lost some um, won some I probably wasn't expected to win and lost some that I probably wasn't expected to lose but that's boxing and, and along the way is full of highs and lows ups and downs and I've I've been on the end of both and um, the lows are low and the highs are high but um, that's just boxing um, the sport we love the sport we hate at times but the sport we can't get away from what was the best win of your career? Um, I mean, beating Danny Jacobs was unbelievable because of his name, his reputation, how we've been a world champion. Beating Bilal Akwe in Vegas on the, the, the Jacobs Keller undercard was, was great. Um, probably my standout win was was beating Padgett Nielsen on the undercard of Groves Cox. And then the Cox win was a, a, a fantastic win as well. Mm. What would you say the most difficult fight you had was? Um, it was difficult losing to Nick Blackwell in the, in the, the fashion I lost to. But then again, like the likes of Jack Arnfield, um, I think the weight really beat me that night, and I was toying with moving up after the Blackwell defeat and didn't. And then the Arthur fight really cemented that I needed. If I was going to continue boxing, I had to move up in weight. 
What would you say was the most disappointing fight of your career? The Cunningsmith fight? Um, In terms of kind of yeah. the aftermath of that as well? Yeah, I mean, that or the Rocky Fielding. I mean, obviously, I wanted to be world champion, but I so wanted to be British champion as well. Um, and I thought, like, I've kind of done that in the Rocky Fielding fight, but, but didn't get a decision. Um, but yeah, they're both tough nights. Um, but there's been there's been nights when I won, and it was like a tough fight because... You did when you expected to win, you made harder work of it. And like I say, boxing is one of those things where you're never fully satisfied when you win and you're pissed off when you lose. People forget as well how long ago the Billy Joe Saunders fight was. I mean, it was back in 2012, was it? Or 13? 13. 13. 11 years ago, and that's why it was crazy to speak to yeah. you to add like a, cl a close fight yeah. all those many years ago. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, looking at that, uh, Kendo Saunders, I mean, was at that fight, and it's just crazy to obviously Billy Joe was an unbelievable talent and beat me in 2013. And just to see the heights he went on to was, was unbelievable and, and well, still continues to go on to. Mm. Yeah, it was, uh, it's a shame you two never rematched as well, because I'm sure that's, that's a fight that would have been interesting to see. I'm, boy, I'm, boy. I'm hearing that tomorrow time when you're trying to lure me back with a, a potential, potential Billy Joe fight. What's that? Well, I don't know what Billy Joe's doing in a minute if he's retired or not, so maybe you both come out. No, but it was a shame that that, that rematch never happened because that was a good fight back in 2013. Yeah, that was a great fight. And listen, I've got the utmost respect for Billy Joe and what he's done. He's gone on to win World Title for two weeks and uh, not like a challenge like myself. So fair play to him for, for setting that and achieving these dreams. Want to talk about that Callum Smith fight? You probably got more attention after the Callum Smith fight, uh, publicity-wise, than you had done for all, all of your fights. Um, I think that's fair to say. Yeah, no, not a ton of attention. Um, I think it was thanks to IFL and Oscar Bewis for keeping the camera rolling at times when you shouldn't have been, got yourself into trouble. But um, that's the side of boxing people don't see, and I think it opened up people's eyes to what goes on behind the scenes at times. You've literally, you've, you've been like the, the model professional, John. I think people have, you've not one to kind of, you've not been the trash talker. You've not been the one to call out fighters in your career. You've had to wait for your opportunities. Do you sometimes wish you had been more vocal in your career? Yeah, I mean, it's nice when people say, oh, he's so easy to work with. And it's like, well, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Am I just, uh, just being a yes man? Or is it like, should, should I be a bit more awkward? Should I have been that pain in the ass that, was asking questions, but listen, it's nice when you sit out of here. It was a pleasure to work with. It's, it's nice and it's humbling. Um, and yes, I don't want to make life hard for anyone. Do you know what I mean? So it's been, I'm great from silver to boxing, especially for the life he's given me, the experience, the travel, the people, but just the whole, the whole thing of it. Yeah. How important is, was Tony Sims in your, in your life and career? I've been very fortunate. I've worked with good trainers in, in boxing, uh, Conor Make, my, my amateur coach, and even before that, the, the Sean Murphy, the Gene Olivers at the Finchley, the Alfie Dorians, the Dunga Petersons at the Angel, Colin Lake, Ivor Jones, Ray Ball, and then Tony Zims. But I've been lucky enough that Tony's always gone, in my in my earlier days, I like someone who's sparring in Poland, Italy, or wherever, and um, like, go and go out there for a week on your own. Fulton Chill with Kelbrook, like, go and do the sparring. And it's just, you, you left to your own devices and listen, a lot of these places you go to, they don't want to give you more room soon rounds and you've got to fend for yourself. So it's been a great, great learning process and a great education for me. Because mm. I'm assuming in that kind of, over that period of you, your professional career, your relationship with Tony wasn't just a gym, obviously. That's a, that's a long period of, his life and your life that you kind of you spent together. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've been on many camps around the states and Spain and Portugal and whatnot. So we spent a lot of time together. Um, and it's just a great man to be around. He's uh, got stories that he's probably not told me half of them. Do you know what I mean? Um, but he's a great man. He's, uh, unbelievable family man. I've learned a lot about it. And on the side of being like a good family man and how he puts his family first. Um, and just, yeah, just being a, a a real good person. I'm assuming with your move now into um, into training that 
Will you be under kind of Tony's guidance for that while you do that? I hope so. I think it'll be good to, to work alongside him for a while, continue to pick his brains, continue to, to learn from him. And uh, so I don't plan on going in there and kicking him to the side and going, this is, this is my shade out. But I'm very much there to he's telling his burden and, and help him. How long has that been in play for you, obviously, towards kind of the last two or three fights? Is this something that you've always wanted to do or is it something that has just come about over the last sort of year or so that you wanted to get into the boxing train? I think it's like a natural progression. Um, I mean, I still, I'm still very much in love with boxing. I still feel like I've got more out of boxing than boxing's got out of me at the moment. And I think that's a, that's a good thing. Um, I think that, I've just, like I say, I still love the sport. I still love being around it. I still love the the batter of the gym. Um, and that's good for, for me moving forward. If I, if I was sick of the sport and hard done by, by the sport, you know, I wouldn't want to be in the gym anymore. I think, fuck this, I'll, I'll do something else. But I do still very much love this sport and love what this sport's done for me. So it would be nice to go in the gym and help Tony and just give back. Aside from what you've done in the ring, what, what's been the most kind of frustrating thing outside of the ring for you that you've learned in boxing over the last four years? Um, just the time on the sidelines. And then we all want to be fighting three, four times a year. And it's, when, you, when you're getting down to when you're fighting twice a year, and it's nice because the, the money's normally that bit better or whatnot. But I always found that I'm better on fight regular and I'm fighting three or four times a year. I'm, I'm in the gym, constantly in the gym, constantly of good weight, constantly to get over and it's just the, the everything's flowing. Your relationship with uh, Matt True and Eddie Hearn um, seem to have worked well. I'm sure there's probably a few behind the scenes ups and downs in terms of what you're talking about with when you were probably waiting for fights or fight dates, etc. But aside from that, that looked like a, a a pretty good relationship that you had all the way through there with Hearn and Metro. Yeah, no, I'm very grateful to Eddie, Barry and Frank. I think um, at times of my career when there was defeats, it was kind of like a bit of a, we'll go elsewhere and liven ourselves up, get ourselves back to winning ways and, and get back and listen, Matchroom always welcomed me back and give me more big fights. So, Nothing but love there. I appreciate the, the kick up the bollocks at times they give me, and um, I, I appreciate everything they've done for me. The uh, big opportunities, the Vegas fight nights, the Canelo fight in Guadalajara, um, th these fights, th these nights of time I'll never forget. Do you believe they delivered everything they possibly could for you? Yeah, I believe they've done, they, they stuck by their word. Um, they're only doing their word, and they there's, they. They don't mark by me. This last time out against uh, Munguia, how was that, Kent? How was you going into that fight? It was, uh, it was always going to be a tough fight. I think um, you knew that. I think everyone did know it was going to be a very hard fight. There, but how was that, your final camp then? Good. I was listening home a lot, being in LA after Christmas. I think there was the the uncertainty of how, how camp was going to work out, whether it was going to be away December or just January, and it ended up just being... Uh, early January we got away for three weeks um, and it was tough I mean it's, I'm, a, I'm a family man first and I was missing my kids my partner but I, I knew I was there to do a job um, and I'm, I'm around great people um, I was in a house with Jay Cordina Jimmy Sainz and Dan Lawrence uh, seeing Tony and the boys every day in the gym obviously Pedro in the, the church to gym in LA is a, is a great bloke so it was good good laugh good people good energy but I think um I think it's funny for the Canelo fight. I said to I think I said to Dan Lawrence that like, I could win and lose or draw it and walk away. But then after the fight, I was like, I can't wait to do this again. And it was like eight, well, eight months down the line. This fight, it was like I don't know if it was still there. I don't know if the fight was still burning. And it was like I think I had to have that fight to realize that it, it wasn't. And it was a, it was a tough fight. He was probably better than I gave him credit for. Um, wasn't sure I had to adjust to that transition of being under Freddie Roach now and if it paid the dividends for where for it just that if he'd get stuck in a style and, and resort to type but um he'd done a good job he thought what he had to do and uh, got me out there. Yeah it makes sense what you said there that you had to have the fight. Um remember years ago when 
uh, Ricky Hatton fought Pacquiao and retired. He felt like he didn't want to be kind of leave it on that. He felt like they, he didn't know whether he wanted to come back. He did come back against uh, Sinchenko. I'm sure you remember that. Yeah. But he, he said something similar, that he had to have that fight to know that it wasn't there for him anymore. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think, like, listen, in, in, if I think back to sparring, was uh, sparring was okay. Uh, training was good. I was still running well. Still hitting the pads well, hitting the bag well. Still giving it 110%. Um, I don't know what way in that, in that sense that it's pedal to the metal. It's a full flow, do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think just in the... I didn't want to drop down the levels and come back six later round as I wanted to operate at a level I've been operating at and that was Canelo and, and Munguil. So I did that, but I'm obviously not as good as I think I still am. And I've dropped the ball a bit and can't keep up with the pace now. Mm. Is there anyone out there that you wish you had fought but didn't fight? Um, the, the dream fight would have been Golovkin um, and it was spoke about briefly um, but I think he's retired and good luck to him I see Tom Buffalo in, uh, in LA said hello I um, was talking to a good friend of Golovkin Camacho he'd done his SNC and I mean I just love Golovkin I think he's a great fighter he's been great for the sport so it was not never bad blood to, to want to fight and he was just wanting to tick that box of shared room with uh, another another rider with one yeah, do you know what you talk about Golovkin? I mean, I don't even know what Golovkin's situation is right now. Obviously, whether he's going to fight again or not. I mean, um, he's been spoken about to fight uh, on numerous occasions, but I haven't heard anything lately. But yeah, that would have been uh, so. That would have been the one here. You and Golovkin just uh, has it. It'd been nice. It ticks off the yeah. the the list of the resume. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd be lucky enough to fight nice and Canelo, Jacobs. They're all people that. I was watching before I'd even turn pro, so the, the dream and aspirations to get to that level was was always there, but then to, to fight him was like a dream come true. Mm -hmm. um, what's the plan for you moving forward now? Is it something you're going to sort of jump straight into uh, with the training, or is it something you're going to gradually kind of just ease yourself into? I'm going to get away with my missus and kids next week um, to have a, have a proper rest, um, get half term out of the way and then hopefully speak to Tony get back in the gym and see where we go from there you've had great support um, from North London and well, you're actually to there anyway but um, you've had always had great support you've always had kind of your loyal fan base that have watched your fight so yeah that must have been kind of good for you and encouraged you all the way through your career yeah definitely and I mean even in the the last couple of fights in Guadalajara and Phoenix, the people coming to board to support me, spending their hard earned cash, it's like, well, I'm grateful for them because it's all very well me going to these places, but if they're not coming, it's like, you see just one man on his sod. Uh, so to, to share the journey with these people has been, been amazing. Do you think you'll be one of these boxers that goes to boxing shows or do you think you'll be one of these people that kind of You'll train your fires and it's there on, you'll go, but if not, then you'll kind of not really be on the scene. Because you, you weren't really at shows, were you? I listened to one of your teammates fighting. I never really kind of saw you just as a fan going to a boxing show. Why? Uh, yeah, odd times um, I would, but yeah, I'd like to think I will. Um, go to my training cap on now, go and enjoy the night. Um, but yeah, I'm sure I will. I've got a lot of friends that still enjoy going to the boxing, so I'm sure I will. Uh, buy a ticket now every now and again and go see a few shows all right well john listen um yeah listen congratulations on a fantastic career um like i said when you look at a 14 year pro career um the people you've been with like i said it hasn't always gone but you've always given it a hundred percent you've you're a fan favorite but like i said it's, you're not always the one that kind of trash talks but i think that's what everyone kind of liked about you as well on the on the on your personality side but um, yeah, it's been uh, it's been enjoyable for eight years watching you fight. Cheers, King. Thank you. Been enjoyable being on your channel. I remember my first interview, between Farco bited in on it, um, at your call on the stage, and I mean that was a a, a box tick to me just to get an interview on IFL. So thank you. Oh please, please. I'm uh, now don't put that on your list. You know, I can say you that brings me to but I like it. Oh. Do you know what? Some of that early footage that we used to have, uh, 
with Barker. Was you, was you out in Atlanta City? I did go to Atlanta City, no. And, um, Ryan Taylor. Taylor, yeah. Is that, yeah, some of them memories from back there, it's not like that anymore. So, but when ISL were out, or ISL loved them back then, were the only people filming them kind of things. Um, yeah, such a long time ago. That, oh, but, yeah, ages, isn't it? I don't know. All right, John, listen, I'll let you crack on with the rest of your day. Um, happy retirement. Best of luck in your uh, new career as a boxing trainer. And no doubt, listen, we're around the boxing all the time. I'm sure you will be as well. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. Wall Street memes casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook. 